Errol Spence has dedicated himself to intense training ahead of his upcoming rematch with Terence Crawford, rapidly approaching the horizon. Meanwhile, Terence Crawford has also been diligently preparing for the fight, pushing himself in training though the weight remains steady and there's no anticipated alteration in the decision. The expectation is for a consistent performance, possibly even an improved one. Thus, Spence might want to remain vigilant before facing Crawford. Bud's trainer expresses confidence in Crawford's prospects of winning the fight. However, this assurance doesn't discount Spence's readiness for the rematch. As for the latest updates on the Terence Crawford vs. Errol Spence rematch, both fighters continue their rigorous preparation, creating heightened anticipation for the outcome of this highly anticipated event. The highly anticipated potential rematch between Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford has garnered attention with the recent release of Spence's training footage, sparking reactions and analyses from fans and experts. Crawford, in response, has also been training for the rematch and commented on Spence's training footage. Crawford's decision to fight as a southpaw in their prior bout was a strategic maneuver, considering Spence's limited experience against southpaws. Crawford mentioned, I think I made the change to fight southpaw in the dressing room because in my mind, I was just so focused. Additionally, top-ranked promoter Bob Arum highlighted that Spence's significant loss in the previous fight was primarily due to his inexperience in facing southpaws. Arum pointed out a crucial statistic. Out of Spence's 38 fights, he had only encountered two southpaw opponents. This statistic suggests a potential challenge or intentional avoidance by Spence when it comes to facing southpaw opponents. Aram highlighted Terence Crawford's adaptability as a crucial element in his triumph over Spence. In contrast to his usual approach of beginning as a right-handed fighter and then transitioning to southpaw, Crawford chose to fight the entire bout against Spence as a southpaw. This tactic exploited Spence's perceived vulnerability to southpaw fighters. Aram pointed out that Crawford's ambidextrous capabilities, especially his potent right-hand jab, proved highly effective against Spence. Aram wasn't surprised by Crawford's dominance in the fight, attributing it to Spence's struggle in effectively countering a left-handed fighter. He believed that if Crawford had switched to an orthodox boxing style for even a few rounds, the fight's outcome might have been different. However, Crawford's persistent choice to stick with the southpaw stance led Aram to swiftly conclude that the fight was essentially decided early on. When discussing the potential for a rematch in a different weight class, specifically at 154 pounds, Aram expressed skepticism about any alteration in the fight's outcome. He questioned whether Spence could adapt to handling a southpaw like Crawford at a higher weight class. Aram held the view that as long as Crawford maintained his southpaw stance, the likely result would remain the same, regardless of the weight class for their rematch. Well, I don't know where Spence's mindset is, but why would it be different? He wants it at 154. And that's not going to make a difference, no, not at all. Interestingly, before his fight with Crawford, Spence had mentioned that he was indifferent towards his opponent's stance and was confident in his ability to handle whatever style Crawford brought into the ring. He highlighted his extensive amateur background and experience, which involved bouts against southpaws, orthodox fighters, and those proficient in switching between styles. However, Spence's performance in the fight contradicted his assertions and raised doubts about his capability to handle a southpaw like Crawford. Another point of contention for Spence is the weight class. Many experts have pointed out that Spence has completed his tenure fighting at 147 pounds and needs to transition to 154 pounds or higher. Jaron Ennis believes that if Crawford and Spence have a rematch at 147 pounds, there won't be any change in the outcome. To give Spence a chance at winning the rematch, he needs to face Crawford at 154 pounds. Ennis mentioned, it was really one-sided, but maybe at 154 he'll have a better advantage and feel a bit better with the extra 7 pounds without losing too much weight. I don't know. Ennis also highlighted Crawford's consistent southpaw stance during their initial fight. The only thing I noticed is that Crawford didn't switch at all. He remained in the southpaw stance the entire time. Crawford is truly a southpaw fighter. I don't think he's built on the right-hand side. When he turned southpaw, you could tell he was right-handed because he concluded his combinations with his right hand. So you could easily tell he was right-handed. 
remarked Ennis. Sean Porter is a strong advocate for the Spence versus Crawford rematch to take place at 154 pounds. He firmly believes in Spence's ability to defeat Crawford and sees potential for Spence to make necessary adjustments. Errol Spence can adapt and become stronger, particularly at 154 pounds, and mentally he's resilient. I believe this is just a hiccup in his career that he wants to rectify, said Porter. Errol Spence Jr. has expressed a clear preference for his rematch against Terence Crawford to occur at 154 pounds. In his statement, Spence indicated that he wouldn't alter anything about the build-up to their prior fight and is open to the idea of a rematch. His specific mention of the 154-pound weight class reflects a strategic consideration for the next bout. This choice might be influenced by factors such as comfort with the weight, perceived advantages at a higher weight class, and advice received from boxing experts advocating for him to move up in weight for the rematch. Errol Spence Jr.'s cousin, an amateur boxer, shared his perspective on the potential rematch at 154 pounds. He believes that moving up in weight, especially after maintaining a certain weight for an extended period, can bring about a different look and approach for a boxer. Jacobs stressed the significant impact weight can have on a boxer's performance and mindset. He anticipates that Errol Spence will enter the ring larger and stronger, potentially changing the dynamics of the rematch with Crawford. Additionally, Jacob reflected on Errol Spence's previous performance against Crawford, giving credit to Crawford without making excuses for Spence. He highlighted the importance of avoiding excuses and being prepared to have a rematch, a sentiment echoed in the boxing community. He believes that Errol Spence shares Jacob's perspective, which is rooted in realism and an unbiased view of the fight game. One individual with a surprising viewpoint on Spence's rematch with Crawford was boxing icon Tim Bradley. Bradley offered a frank evaluation of Errol Spence's approach to the highly anticipated fight with Terence Crawford. He criticized Spence and his team for delaying the fight, suggesting that they had a strategy to let Crawford age out, hoping to catch him slipping. Later in his career, Bradley saw this strategy as a misstep, contending that Spence should have taken the fight earlier when he was at his peak. He was resolute in disregarding any excuses for Spence's performance or the fight's result, emphasizing the importance of acknowledging the outcome without attributing it to factors like weight cutting. Bradley stressed that both fighters agreed to the terms and that the better man emerged victorious that night. Regarding the potential rematch at 154 pounds, Bradley expressed doubt about any significant change in the outcome. He asserted that Spence's fundamental style and approach wouldn't be altered by the shift in weight class. Bradley predicted that the rematch would pose an even greater challenge for Spence, as Crawford would now be more acquainted with his strength and power. I want you to know that you're easy to figure out, and that's a dangerous position to be in when you're facing a skilled fighter who can adapt and read your moves effortlessly in the ring. Bradley advised Spence. He urged Spence to reconsider his health and future in boxing, particularly in light of the risks associated with facing someone like Crawford again. Bradley suggested that Spence take a break, participate in a few fights to regain his form, and then make a decision about competing at the top level. Bradley stressed the significance of prioritizing family and well-being over enduring further punishment in the ring. At the same time, he lauded Crawford's abilities and foresaw his continued success, even if he were to move up to face fighters like Jermall Charlo. Bradley anticipated skepticism from critics but maintained that Crawford would be remembered as one of the greatest boxers of all time. He drew parallels between Crawford's skill set and that of legendary boxers such as Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Robinson. Another expert echoing Bradley's skepticism regarding the rematch was unsurprisingly Brian Bomack McIntyre, Crawford's trainer. Bomack expressed uncertainty regarding whether the rematch would occur at 154 pounds or stick to the 147 pound limit. This uncertainty mirrors the ongoing discussions and strategic considerations that both camps are likely deliberating upon in preparation for the rematch. Bomack confidently predicted the outcome of the rematch, regardless of the weight class. He unequivocally stated that there wouldn't be any alteration in the decision, emphasizing that Crawford's performance would continue to dominate. 
He even hinted at the possibility of Crawford's performance improving in the rematch, demonstrating a strong belief in Crawford's ability to adapt and excel further. Push the weight up, but there won't be any change in the decision, he asserted. Bomack issues a cautionary note to Errol Spence Jr., implying that Spence should be cautious about triggering the rematch clause. His comment, he might want to watch out before he activates the rematch clause, indicates that BAC perceives a significant risk for Spence in facing Crawford again. This might stem from a mix of confidence in Crawford's abilities and a strategic mind game aimed at pressuring Spence. Considering all the advice for Spence regarding moving up in weight and the potential rematch at 154 pounds, what did Spence's coach Derek James say about their last fight and the potential rematch? In his most recent interview, James discussed Spence's physical condition and the strategic approach for a potential rematch against Terence Crawford. He emphasized that at 154 pounds, Spence would not experience the same level of exhaustion or depletion, hinting at a stronger and more dynamic performance in the rematch. James dismissed the notion that weight posed a problem in their previous bout, attributing credit to Crawford for his strategic approach and performance. He acknowledged Crawford as the superior fighter on that particular day, reflecting a realistic and respectful perspective toward the opponent. He appears to be gearing Spence up to face Crawford once more, placing a strong focus on Spence's strengths and advancements rather than lingering on past shortcomings. This approach signifies a forward-looking strategy, emphasizing how Spence can adapt and surmount the challenges posed by Crawford. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.